What had the better box art, the original or the remake? That's what we're about to find out in this episode of Defunct Games Decides, the show that's all about coming to a conclusive conclusion. I'll be joined today by my buddy and host of the Halcyon Show, Lorne Risley, and together we're going to look at six of the best known remakes from the last 35 years. I'm talking about games like Metroid, Resident Evil, Ratchet and Clank, Shadow of the Colossus, Metal Gear Solid, and Yakuza. Every one of these games had radically different box art, and today we're going to decide if we like the original or the remake. All right, folks, are you ready to do this? Let's do some deciding. Hey, Lauren, how you doing? I'm really good, buddy. How you doing? Well, you know, I it, things are things are okay. You know, they're the the heat. It's too hot. Where? How is it? How how is it at your place? It's hotter than holy hell, but we're loving it at the moment. We had nine months of winter this year, so we're loving it. Oh well, um. <laughs> Let me ask you, uh, how do you come down on, on remakes? Are you a big fan of remakes? I like them. I'm not a fan of them. Okay. Uh, well, we've seen a lot of them this year. Between, we had uh, Resident Evil 2 uh, came out a couple of months ago. Uh, of course, we saw a lot of stuff at E3 about uh, Final Fantasy VII which is going to be apparently a couple of different games. And then Sega announced a Panzer Dragoon. They're remaking Panzer Dragoon, so that's that's fun. Uh, are you interested in any of those? I know you're not a big big horror fan, so maybe Resident Evil 2 might not be your thing, but what about like Final Fantasy VII? Are you interested in that? Absolutely. Um, a lot of my okay. friends have talked about the impact that it had on them as gamers, the story sure. elements, uh, one of the most famous deaths in gaming history. Mm, I would be very spoiler. interested in seeing what a up-to-date, high-definition version of that game would be, and if it inspires me to go back and play the original. Ooh, boy, yeah, that's it's it's hard to go back to that original one. But that's actually one of the things that I wanted to talk about today. And so far in these episodes, now that we've we've done three of them, this is our fourth one. Uh, we've looked at some of the uh, like we we looked at the Japanese and American box art, and then last week. We looked at the uh, the European and American box art for Mega Man, uh, and this time I wanted to go in a little different direction. I wanted to do something that uh, I thought might be fun and go with the original box art and the remake box art. So we, I I, I have a whole bunch of them, and and here's when when compiling my list, I wanted to make sure of one thing. I wanted to make sure that these were actual remakes, and I'm not talking about remasters or games with the same name or reboots or resurrections or anything. I'm talking about actual, genuine remakes. So I've, I've chosen a handful of actual remakes. And do you, do you have a uh, like a personal favorite remake? Probably, uh, oh, I don't know if it counts as a remake, but probably the Fable Anniversary Edition, maybe. Mm, I think isn't that isn't that more of a a remaster? I haven't mm, played that. Probably, probably, yeah. All right. Well, I I have a, a handful of of real remakes, not that anniversary <laughs> crap, and <laughs> we're gonna take a look at those, and we're gonna decide uh, who had the better uh, who had the better cover. Is it gonna be the original or the remake? And we're going to start right now with our first cover. Let's do it. I think one of the most successful and uh, most influential remakes of all time, so certainly one of the most noteworthy, has to be Resident Evil. The original came out in 1996. The remake, just six years later, in 2002. Uh, exclusively for the GameCube at that point. Anyway, the uh, the original and the the remake. This this is a great place to start because we we just had the Resident Evil Two remake. So uh, I'm going to go with the on all of these. It's going to be the old on the left and the remake on the right. And so for this one specifically, uh, I used the original long box version of the the Resident Evil cover. And I'm curious. I know you're not a big uh, big horror fan, but what what are your thoughts on the original box, Lord? I have a question, first of all. Yeah, what's up? Are those spiders? Those are spiders. Those are giant spiders. Yeah, they get a big nope from me then, my friend. 
You don't, <laughs> that's your phobia? Not a big, not a big, big spider fan? Big old nope to the spiders. Mm. Big nope to the spiders. Even small spiders? Even small spiders, they're the worst. They oh. think they can run up in your place and just make webs everywhere. <laughs> They own the place. Don't like when it. When you went to Australia, did you see any of those really, really big spiders? No, but they're not the ones that are going to going to haunt your dreams. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's certainly a striking image. I have questions yes. about it. Well, I okay. Before we get to the questions, because I, mm. I have a couple of my own, too. Sure. But I think what's interesting about the original cover is that if you if you didn't know anything about the game, if you hadn't read the description, if you, you know, if you hadn't seen a commercial or read any of the magazine uh, stuff, you'd go into this thinking that this is probably a game about a guy versus giant spiders. Indeed, yeah. And not, and not zombies. There are zombies on this kind of but it's all like close-ups of their faces and it's really hard to tell what those are in the upper part of the of the picture mm. the only thing like the only bad guy you can really make out are those spiders indeed yeah so and 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 to be fair that is something in the game so it's not it's not misleading mm. but boy yeah if you didn't know you wouldn't know what to expect from from this i don't think but mm. at the same time that's that's kind of cool it's definitely trying to it's trying to sell up the uh, the scary aspect with the spiders being at the forefront rather than zombies which i mean you're probably better versed than me than this in this era were zombies as prevalent as they are today in terms of a threat or were they is was this one of the precursors to that would you say uh, this, I mean, yeah, this this was not necessarily a zombie hev uh, heavy era, so not certainly not like it is right now. Mm. This, uh, along with some other films, this helped bring it back. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if zombies necessarily would have been something that people wouldn't have gravitated towards. Mm. I think that that's something like from the magazine. Uh, descriptions and reviews and stuff like that that's actually one of the big selling points so it's a little surprising that that, that they don't show up uh in this cover more uh, they're, they're certainly the, on the back of the box it could be the graphic nature of zombies though being uh, again different time um, and sure. i remember the the presentation of violence being a little bit different uh, what you couldn't get, get away with on box art or indeed just generally with mm -hmm. um uh, with media so I guess the spiders are there to help, again, add the element of phobia, fear, uh, without leaning heavily on the zombies, yeah. which you would have to... You would kind of, you would almost have to play up the gore element to make them scarier, presumably. What do, what do you... Now, what are your thoughts about the guy? Now, I, I think this is supposed to be... I, the chat will... Or the, uh, the comments will let me know if I'm wrong. But I think this is supposed to be Chris Redfield, of the mm. you know, the, a Stars member. But if it's not... It's at least some random stars member, but he has a gun and stuff like that. Does this, does with the expression and the gun, does it make it look like it's more of an action game? Uh, it does. Um, again, I'm going to have to flip the question on you. How would you describe his expression? Um, a little terrified. It's a, it's, it's odd. It's an odd look. He has it's, half it's, terrified, it's, yeah. half really pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> There's no middle ground between those two emotions, just they're both displayed simultaneously sure. on his face. For sure. Which is a good job why he's got a giant shotgun, I suppose, then. Right, right. Useful in both of those situations. <laughs> well, let's jump over to the uh, to the newer cover, the, the 2002 cover of the remake. Uh, do you like this cover? I do, actually, yeah. Do oh, you? Well. I think it would be more threatening if the roles were reversed, but I actually kind of like okay. the fact that she's got the zombie up against the wall. That's kind of cool. I like that. Sure. Um, yeah. Yes, I, I agree. This is this lets you know what you're getting. Yes. Uh, it 100%. has a accurate representation of what the characters look like, including the zombie. It shows us sort of the setting. This is much more accurate, but there's something about that angle I don't like. Uh... Mm. And it's, I don't think it's helped much by the boring background. And it's like, it it's more accurate, but at the same time, it's just not as stylish. And so like, it's a, it's a probably a better cover, 
but I don't like it as much. It's certainly less memorable than the original cover, I'll yeah. grant you that. But I think that what they're trying to do is they're trying to incorporate as many elements of the game as they can. So you've right. got the zombie, you've got the main character, and you've got the house, which is something mm -hmm. that is kind of That's unique a big part to the of game. It. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the fact That's that it's, a huge, it's, it's its own character. Exactly. So I think that what they've tried to do is flat, I will grant you that. The angle doesn't yeah. serve the perspective very well, but it does serve the purpose of including everything. If they just moved the camera a little bit so it was maybe a little bit behind her, it would have, like, the 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 design like would have a little bit more urgency. Sure. Uh, or something. I, I don't know. It just... Like, it's not a bad cover, and, and and the original Resident Evil is not a great cover. Like, the, the, the face is weird, and it's it has, like, that collage sort of... But I, I think the... I think I like the original artwork just because it's more memorable. Mm. Where, where do you come down on this? You'd have me right up until the moment that you say, and guess what? It's got two giant spiders on the cover. <laughs> so... As much as I ag I agree with you in principle for everything that you've just said, even down to the fact that the, the design of the logo, while rudimental on the original cover, it yeah. certainly looks better than on the, the, the remake version. It just for looks sure. like a little bit washed out. But I, I like the remake version a little bit better. Okay. All right, well, this uh, we're starting off with a split decision. And, boy, hopefully hopefully the, the viewers are not as afraid of spiders as you are. <laughs> So they'll side with me. Hopefully not. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. So up next, we have Metroid. I think this is probably the biggest spread between the original and the remake that we're going to talk about today. Because the original, uh, it came out in 1986. And Zero Mission on the Game Boy Advance came out in 2004. That's a big spread. And, uh, boy, I already know you have some strong opinions about the original, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the original. The original, I just... It's its clear that they've just pulled the designs from the game. Yes, Nothing wrong with that, but there's very little artistically going on here. There's not a lot that they're really conveying, but... Right. I mean, what do you think? Do you do you well, like this is... the fact that they've pulled from the game directly, or do you wish that maybe well, they'd have gone a little bit more stylistic? This is from like the first couple of years where all uh, basically all of Nintendo's covers just pulled from you know the the art design or the the pixel graphics from the game and used them on the box sure. in, in the same sort of weird you know design and and. I like that. That's memorable. I have a lot of nostalgia. It, it you know, this this sort of cover, it, it fills my heart with warmth. Mm. But yeah, it's. I mean, like looking at it, it's a lot of uh, a lot of gray in this cover. Um, I always felt that the uh, what's the what's the little floating yellow thing? I always thought that looked like a pastry, even in the game. Um, what is it? I, it's an alien. A delicious-looking alien? I'm, I'm so hungry right now. Um, <laughs> there are little things like again, we you know, a couple of uh, episodes ago, we talked about the Sega putting all the like the the action logo on their on their Mega Drive cartridges, and I like that. Of course, yeah. Nintendo had a similar thing uh, with the Adventure series. That, that's pretty cool. But no, like I'm with you that. Just from a design perspective, I mean, this is accurate. This shows you what you're getting, for the most part. <laughs> um, but no, it's not. It's not the most interesting. It's not the most interesting cover. Not mm. you know for sure, for sure. But I'll be the first to tell you, not a huge fan of the Zero Mission cover art either. Yeah, there's just something a little bit generic about it, isn't there? Just something. Even even though everything yeah. about it is. Like it's it's not the worst design. There's yeah, action. Yeah. There's good perspective. Good color contrast. It just doesn't. Well, it benefits. Really do anything? Does it? No. It benefits from, you know, being a hand drawn cover. Mm. But the problem is that it ends up looking more like a beat 'em up than an action game. Like you know, this is like Final Fight or Streets of Rage or something. Sure. Uh, but there are things I like about it because I mean. I, I study this cover because my initial reaction is is not super positive, 
But then I, you know, I look at all the details and I'm like, well, what is it about it that I don't like? Because, I mean, I like the, you know, we see the alien architecture. Um, you know, I, I like all that, but I don't think we see enough of the aliens. And I'm not a big fan of the actual action shot because I'm not sure that that really represents what we get in the game. Uh, so, but I'll tell you what I do like about both covers, just hmm. specifically is that I like that both covers have Samus inside of the, the suit. So that sure. neither cover gives away who Samus is. Yeah. So if you didn't know that going into Met, you somehow didn't know that going into Zero Mission. I don't know who you are, but let's just imagine you're that one person that didn't know. You could conceivably be surprised. No, that's a good shout. Um, I think the, the reason why, I mean, I don't know if this necessarily speaks to what you're, you're saying there, but... It's because the emphasis is on the character, but being as she's an iconic character, there's mm -hmm. nothing really that emphasizes her and the shot. Right. And there's nothing iconic about the pose. There's nothing unique about the situation. Um, there's just something... It, it, this looks like a panel in a comic book about her that's yeah. a transitional panel. Is There's nothing... This isn't the iconic pose. This isn't the thing that people are going to be drawing in classrooms for years and years. No. This is something that transitions between those two things. What and I as would a result, like to have seen... Oh, sorry. Keep no, no, no. It, uh, just as a result, it just looks a little bit generic and a little bit bland. Yeah. What, what, I, what I would have liked to have seen is, like, instead of this new pose, them somehow honor the original artwork and kind of maybe doing that sort of action. Mm. But... Um, you know, in a in a hand drawn sort of way, but that that is, I mean, that's not the point here. Uh, I think just by default, though, I do have to go with zero mission because like the hand drawn graphics are better, or the hand drawn art is better. Uh, the original just like I, I I don't mind the the in game graphics being used, but there's just so much gray used in that real estate that it's just it's kind of boring. Yeah. Um, you know, it's. it's I, trying I to justify a corduroy suit in 2019. Yes, there's <laughs> nothing fundamentally wrong with it, but there's just something that says this does not look good, and it just it just doesn't look good. It no, it just there's nothing to really like apart from, ironically enough, the action series adventure series logo. Oh, that's such itself, a good logo. Is, yeah, it's a, it's a good logo. Yeah, if you that almost pushes that. it over the edge. <laughs> that that's sorely missed in the in the remake. It is, yeah. But I think no, I, I agree with you entirely on this one. All right, all right. Well, zero mission takes it. Now, when it comes to a lot of these covers, I've noticed that uh, they've been radically different. We just looked at Metroid, and I mean those those two covers. Couldn't have been more different. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus, on the other hand, has two very similar covers between the PlayStation 2 one, which came out in 2005, and the 2018 remake on the PlayStation 4. And, uh, the I mean, there are big differences. The biggest, of course, is that these are two completely different colossi. Colossi? Yeah, that's, that's the way. Yeah, you got it in one. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we have, I believe it's uh, Valus the first Colossus on the PlayStation 2 side, and then Gaius, the third Colossus on the PlayStation 4 side. Uh, but there aren't, like, they're very similar in what they're trying to convey, which is mm. small person, large, large boss. Mm. And, uh, you know, we in both we see some, like, uh, world stuff, you know, a building or something in the background, and then clouds. So they're not really that different. Do you have a preference between either of these? I do, but it's it, you've kind of already hit it out of the part, which is that it, this is just a question of subtle differences rather than yeah. drastic changes. Um, just even even the nature of the, the, the wording of the font, uh, the positioning yes. of the Colossus, the building in the background, the positioning of the uh, the protagonist, it's all similar but it, there's, there, it does deride a couple of differences, and it's just in what your personal preference is, I guess, because the For differences sure. are so subtle. I personally prefer the original. 
it's just okay. something about the sepia look, the beam of light emanating from mm-hmm. between the Colossus that actually generates a shadow, which is kind of in the, kind of in the title of the game. Uh, the fact that he's facing the protagonist as opposed to walking away. Um, even though that you could argue that the walking away uh, is um, foreshadowing in the mm-hmm. PS4 for the for the nature of the story without giving anything away. Um, mm-hmm. What about you? Which do you prefer of the two? Well, I agree with everything you said, except for the fact in the original box art that he is in in the shadow. Because I don't think he is. The light specifically coming through and illuminating him, like it's it's almost like a spotlight. Uh, indeed, but you can you can like, see the discrepancy between the light beam, the light that emanates from behind yeah. the Colossus, and the shadow in the bottom right hand corner. It's because I was going to say a literal shadow there. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say the the one where he's really in the shadow is the the remake. But either way, I, I like that he's on the horse in mm-hmm. the in the original. I like that the Colossus is actually looking at him. Yeah. Like this is like the, it's like they're they've locked eyes and it's two, you know, two fighters getting ready to go at it. Exactly. Um, I, I like I think that conveys the size a little bit better because the problem I have with the remake is that it's it's a little hard to tell the depth or, it, you know, the where that i mean that person could just be a lot closer to the camera that's why he's 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 uh, larger and you know it could be in the distance so mm. i i'm and then the other problem i have with the with the remake is that it's like there's a beam of light going up like it's a like a every superhero movie yep i'm not real sure about that no i just i think they had a really good thing going with the original and that and that that logos great it's so much better i'm starting to think you've got something against bright beams of light emanating from the center of a large (laughs) city area that somehow doesn't make a movie amazing the second it happens that's that's like every superhero movie between like 2005 and 2015 that sounds suspiciously like you don't like it but it's in every movie (laughs) so it has to be good it has to be good it has to be no you're right um yeah, yeah, I mean, just I mean, to touch on something, the fact that the 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 positioning of the camera in the first uh, edition, because it's flat, really sells the the size discrepancy between the protagonist and the, yes. the Colossus. Whereas because it's a little bit elevated in the remake, even mm-hmm. though the Colossus is just as big, it, there's just something less imposing about the figure. Yeah. Um, I do like the little details though. So, for instance, if you if you observe closely on the on the remake, there's debris and things yep. coming off of the clo- uh, because it's moving because it would. Yeah. Um, that's a really nice little touch. Um, that is. Uh, the the weather graphics in the background are a little bit better, but of course you'd probably expect that to be the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just on balance, I think the original sells the premise a little bit better, and sure. its overall aesthetic is just a tiny little bit better. Yeah. All right. I think the PlayStation 2, the original, that's the winner. Up next is another PlayStation 2 exclusive, or a PlayStation exclusive, I should say. It's Ratchet and Clank, popular series from Insomniac. There are a bunch of sequels to it. Uh, the original one came out in 2002. The remake came out around the same time as the movie in 2016, and it is worth noting that, yes, this is a remake to the original PlayStation 2 game. Um, here's the first thing that I noticed immediately, which is I, I had forgotten how much they had changed the design of Ratchet. Mm. Like, that, that is almost a completely different face. He has gotten some sort of uh, cosmetic work done, and sure he's he's much more anthropomorph i always struggle with that word but he looks much yes. more humanistic as opposed to uh, the closest thing i can uh, i can conflate him with is probably crash bandicoot in the, sure. the large eyes big grin much yeah. more animalistic but in in the in the remade version much more much more human in his features clank on the other hand still looks basically the same mm. <laughs> but now okay uh I went into this one thinking that I was going to prefer the the remake, because there's really a lot more going on in the in the remake. Sure. Like the the PlayStation 2 version, 
It's very simple. But I'm going to tell you why I prefer... We're going to just start with why I prefer the original mm -hmm. cover. And it has nothing to do with his look. I, I kind of prefer the, the more recent look. But, boy, the original... What it does is it highlights, it, it, it celebrates the amount of different cool weapons that are in the game. Mm. There he is standing in front of just a whole loadout of, you know, he's got the suck cannon and the, the Tesla claw and the blaster and all kinds of stuff. And he's even carrying a gun that's like the size of him. Mm. Like it's just this giant gun. And so what this really sells is the the weapon nature of it. That this, you know what, this is a this is a cute like a cute character, like a cartoony uh, Crash Bandicoot character. But you know what, he's loaded to bear. Mm. He's coming with all kinds of guns, and I like that. And that's that's kind of the draw of that series. And and I always loved seeing all the different kind of guns, crazy guns they'd come up with, you know, throughout the the various sequels. Mm. And they don't do that on the on the remake. Instead, what they do is they just load it up with a lot of faces of characters. And if you've never played any of those games, you, you won't really care about those characters. No, you're right. It's it's much more traditional in the layout of the mm. hero, protagonists, uh, uh, ancillary characters. Whereas the original emphasizes what makes him, if you want to refer to him as iconic, what makes him him. Yeah. i.e. the wide assortment of weapons, the emphasis on him as the character. It gives you a sense of what the game's going to be like because he's got a cheeky glint in his eye. Yeah. And again, he's almost he's sort of leaning back, just barely containing this arm cannon that he's, <laughs> he's got about there, to topple over. having to hold with both hands. You know, it, and, and the, to, to some degree, the, the redesign looks, however you, you know, again, more humanistic but yeah there is something more iconic about the original version there's something more yeah. unique about him and yeah i agree um while aesthetically it might not hold up in terms of how slick it looks or tradi it, you know traditionally it just it looks a little bit odd to have him sort of um juxtaposed to the weaponry he's going to be using as a gamer though you do look at it and you're a bit idly oh what's that behind his head What's, yeah. that, what's that behind his right ear? That looks that looks interesting. Does that it, say Devastator? Mm. <laughs> so it, yeah, the, it certainly it piques your interest more than for sure. wow. Joe from Family Guy used to be a baddie in Ratchet and Clank. Clank apparently, you know. So it's it it, it piques your interest more as a gamer rather than in terms of the story because you're gonna want to get hands on time with these guns. Yes. So yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, the, the, the new one just looks like a movie poster. Yes, 100%. And it's not as interesting to me. So I think we agree again that the original takes it. Well, Lauren, I think we've agreed with, it's like three in a row already, which is unbelievable to me so maybe we'll we'll mix it up here a little bit and see how it goes with yakuza which was remade in 2017 it came first came out in 2006 uh was remade as yakuza kawami in uh, 2017 and uh i reviewed it when it came out and it's great but though i'm not gonna hold that against this cover we're gonna take a look at both of these and you, now, now, when we were talking about this, you said that this was a pretty clear-cut one, or you think this one, this one. Wh where do you stand on either of these two covers? I prefer the remake version. Okay. Why if is that? only because the I like the framing of the two characters with a, I presume, uh, another character in the middle. Uh, I, I, it's mm -hmm. worth pointing out I've not played this game, so the story right. eludes me. But we I would Haruka judge based on in the, the in the middle. Yep, I would, I would imagine there's going to be some interaction between those two characters either in uh, conflict over this person mm -hmm. or as a joint venture, doubtful, considering, again, they're almost pitted against each other. Um, right. I like the lack of colour on this. Sometimes I don't, but I actually like the shades of grey that it seems to be uh, evoking. Like the, the bl yeah, the black and white characters, except for... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's, that's, that's the one I cool. prefer. But, I mean, uh, let me throw it to you. What, what do you think? 
Well, before I get into that, let's first, uh, I probably should have done this first, let's first mention that, of course, the, the remake decides to, to use a bunch of the cast. Mm. So we have uh, 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 Kazuma uh, Kiru, uh, the lead character, the one that's on the cover of the PlayStation 2 box art, uh, is on the left-hand side, and mm -hmm. then the face on the other side is Akira, who's, uh, who, who's a bit of a foe in the, in the, in the game. Uh, and then we, we see the, the girl, uh, Haruka, who we, we end up looking after for, for a bunch of this game. Uh, these are sort of the main characters. There's a bunch of others. But it, it, this looks more like a movie poster, the, or, uh, the PlayStation 4 version. Mm -hmm. You know, we, it definitely shows you sort of the conflict. It shows you, like, you know, just from looking at it, you sort of get the feeling these two guys are probably against each other or there's sure. something going on here. And you know what? I bet that girl has something to do with it. She's stuck in the middle. Whereas the original, boy, it focuses on that tattoo. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is a artwork heavy cover. Sure. And if you're not into the elaborate artwork of that tattoo, which to be fair, I'm not a huge tattoo guy, but to be fair, uh, that is a, that's a pretty badass tattoo. Uh, but boy, it's it, the problem I have with it is that it's that design and then it's on top of that design in the background. Like, I, I kind of feel like they're, like that would have st stood out more if it was a different background or something. And therein lies the problem. Uh, I admit it's certainly very artistic. Mm -hmm. uh, the trouble is, I see it tattooed on every single guy at the gym's arm from oh, no. top to the top. So <laughs> there's only so many times I can see someone who thinks he's deep because he has Japanese-style uh, tattoos on his arm. For sure. That I start to go, eh, maybe I'm not so hot on Japanese like, tattoos anymore. But hold on, do do any of them have the full back tattoo? Because that's some dedication. I'll go one step further. I've seen this case tattooed <laughs> on someone's but No, I haven't really. But it could be. That's that's the thing. It's it's the sad thing is when this game came out, I I would probably be with you, which is that the the stark contrast of the red versus the black and the white, the mm -hmm. vivid nature of the tattoo, the somewhat uh, ambiguous nature of the character facing backwards, and obviously the link with the EQs and the tattoo. It's all mm -hmm. very interesting. The trouble is, in 2019, when everyone has these tattoos, <laughs> it's a less unique style. It's okay. certainly uh, uh, done over a bit. Whereas the, the the remake version, it tells more of the story. And yes. I like that a little bit more. It, it pulls you in more, at least from... like It It makes it obvious what's, what's happening as Indeed. opposed to the original. Um, Which, again, personal preference, if you like your games ambiguous, but you want to an idea of what you're going to be getting into from a gameplay perspective, the original sure. probably sells that bit better. The story element, the remake, without a doubt, sells that yeah. better. I, this is a real close one for me. I'm leaning towards the remake, even though there are definitely things about it I don't like. And just the like from an artistic perspective, I, I really like the original cover. You know what? No, I swayed myself. I'm going with the original cover. <laughs> like it was it was real close there though. It was like a 4951 split. So no, I I pushed myself over. Like the only thing I really like if he was just standing in front of something else. Like I don't I, I don't go to the gym, so I don't see those douchey guys. But uh <laughs> but like I mean, no, I just the this it doesn't tell me much about the story, but it is it is a more memorable uh, design that that stands out. Nothing I could say to convince you. Ah, I think we got another split decision. We'll yeah. just have to throw it to the audience because these are two very different covers. So I'm, I'm curious where the, the lines are going to be drawn. All right, and finally, we have Metal Gear Solid. Now, this, this is one of the ones I immediately thought of simply because of how iconic the original box art is. And I couldn't wait to hear your thoughts on it. But let me set this up a little bit here. The original came out in, in of course, 1998. And the remake, which came out in 2004, was, of course, done by the people that did Eternal Darkness, one of my favorite games led by kind of a bad guy. But let, we're not going to talk about that right now. Because we're going to talk about Metal Gear Solid. Have you ever played a Metal Gear Solid game, Lauren? Indeed, I played the original. The original. 
So you, you, you've you seen this cover. I have indeed, yes. Yes. Did you play the remake? I did not. I don't like the remake. I love the Metal Gear games. I, I was not a fan of the remake, but I'm not going to hold that against it when it comes to this artwork because I can't wait to hear which of these two you prefer. Now, of course, the original from 1998 doesn't have any artwork at all. This is this is as minimalist as you can get for a for a 90s box art. It's mm. just the logo and then it says tactical espionage action. That's all you get. Oh, let me ask you first. Do you like that? You're leaning heavily on the name there. And yes. I remember as a kid thinking Metal Gear Solid does sound pretty damn cool if it nothing does. else. I don't know what that means. Yes. But it sounds damn cool. But this is a confident cover. It's very, yeah, it's it's bold in its unboldness. Yes. This is this is a this is a company that that knew that they didn't they didn't need to to put up fancy graphics on the cover. They didn't need artwork. They just needed the name. That was going to sell it. It was going to draw people in. And to be fair, part of that is because it had years of hype, but still <laughs> that 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 is that is a name that was going to draw people in. Whereas I don't think the GameCube uh, exclusive, the uh, the remake, uh, I'm not I'm not sure that necessarily had the uh, the same intention because they mm. they went with the artwork, and I got to admit, I don't like this artwork. <laughs> <sighs> I'm right there with you. Uh... I don't like this cover at all. Mm. Oh, oh. Go on, hit, you, you, you gotta go first, because okay. I just I have I have one killer point to make about this cover, but uh, tell me. Well, hopefully give, I don't give, step on give it. Give me all the thoughts. No no no, you but give me all okay. the thoughts. Give me all the thoughts. Here's my issue. Well, let's start with the name. Don't like the name. Now, this is petty because we're talking about the art. Fair enough. But like the twin snakes doesn't sound like this is a it's not goofy enough. You know, it sounds like something that is done by a different company. Like when you when you get when you get real Metal Gear, you get Peace Walker and Snake Eater and goofy things. This, is, but let's forget about that. Let's just look at the two. Like I, I don't like that these are like model poses. It's almost like they're like they were like photoshopped in. Yeah. From from other like you know Liquid Snake showing off his butt and then you know so I, I don't like this. I don't like this I also don't like that it's it's so much green and gray mm. not a fan of that I just nothing about this cover works for me well I, okay two killer points then um, number one <laughs> twin snake sounds like a bad mafia name hey look it's sure. uh, it's Johnny twin snake see how you doing <laughs> Terrible, awful. We, we already did that episode of, of Mobster or Sonic the Hedgehog character. Oh, really? Yes, you're right. We should definitely go and check <laughs> that out. Um, and then you've got, like you say, the the. Here's the problem: if they'd have used that art style, that I I oh, I spent so long trying to emulate when I was a kid, trying to draw mm -hmm. it in the same way that over overly emphasized line style heavy mm -hmm. hues deep textures but very cartoony at the same time quintessentially japanese if they'd have used that here maybe these poses would have worked yeah but because they've used as effectively the cgi character models albeit yeah you can yeah. tell that there's some touching up afterwards sure it just looks too basic it just looks too uninspired like you say yeah. it's literally like they've just plucked the two characters back to back even though this neither that doesn't happen in the game right and what's what's sad is that there's a lot of great you know concept artwork a lot of you know hand-drawn artwork for these these characters indeed yeah. and, and in, in this game even there's uh like i remember yeah it was at, at e3 that year they gave out a like in their press release, they had a bunch of great artwork for this game. Mm. All of that would have been better, or, or I, I would even be okay with those two, you know, the polygonal characters, if they had maybe put it behind, you know, put them in front of that artwork or something else. But like, 
in the background, we get sort of the Metal Gear in, in motion, and you can barely make out what it is. Indeed. And it's yeah. not menacing because it's hard to tell, and it's just nothing works on it. I, I really don't. I really don't like this cover. It's it's tricky to, uh, and more to the point. Once you've had the game out for a while, I would, uh, even though it's a trope that we've criticised covers for using in the past, given the the nature of the cast of this game, you know, the, the, every character having a unique and different yeah. style and a uh, unique and different ability and different mm -hmm. mannerisms, this would have been a great opportunity to to exhibit them. For but sure. instead, like you say, you've got a washed out background with what you would uh, you would guess to be a Metal Gear, but yeah. unless you'd played the game. You'd have no idea what that is. Exactly. So it doesn't sell anything. It doesn't sell the fact that this is a threat or this is somehow an objective or something. There's a stake involved there. It's just a bit, what's that in the background? I have no idea. But there's two dudes and they seem to really like having their backs to each other. Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree. I agree. And I, I think that, like, when I... Like when I look at the original, like this is this is a I mean there's not much to it, but it is a cover I remember. I, I will never forget this cover. It is it is you know, it, it is sleek and it's simple, but it's iconic. And it's you know, I think that it's that sign of confidence really works. Mm. I think that that helped a lot. Indeed. Yeah, so I I think we both agree the, the original takes it. The original does take it on this one, yeah. Wow, we, we agreed a lot. We only have a couple of uh, a couple of split decisions for the people to uh, to tell us about. We we know we're at the end now because I stumble all over that. <laughs> this is I... this is the point of the show where we just screw up an ending and we toss it up and because no one's listening at this point, they they're already in the comments talking about oh, I can't believe you didn't like such and such cover. The only person listening think. at this point is James Cameron taking notes for Avatar 2. You know that, I know that. <laughs> oh no, we're ending with another Avatar thing. <laughs> it's okay, James. You're welcome to the ideas. <laughs> well, actually, no, we weren't cutting in on those residuals. Actually, I've just said Avatar 2 might be the highest grossing film of all time. I want cutting in on that. I don't know about you. There's, there's no way it's going to be the highest grossing film of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? He doesn't want a cut. Make... I want his cut. It'll make at least a billion dollars less than the original. You heard it here first. You came for the cover. You came for the cover art, and you leave with predictions about the box office. There you go. This is a great ending. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Defunct Games Decides. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new features just like this almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What game is in most need of a modern remake? Also, don't forget that we're counting on you to break our split decisions. So you're gonna have to let us know which versions of the Resident Evil and Yakuza covers you like better. In other news, we're done with this week, but we'll be back in a few days with a bunch of reviews, as well as a new episode of Game Over, the early years. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then,